Referring to the gold and silver ratio, this ratio hit 38 to 1 in 2012, approximately 20 to 1 in 1987 and 16 to 1 in 1930, as it is now at 75 to 1. Would it, be, would it be wise to be buying one ounce silver coins now and changing them over for gold when the ratio closes in at the maybe around 38 to 1, which means you would be buying gold at half price? Um, I, I think it's a good idea to buy silver coins. I, I own a silver and gold. I think they each have a place. Um, the interesting thing about silver, first of all, I do think it's cheap. I, I don't put much stock in the ratio. I understand the ratio has fluctuated, but silver and gold have different dynamics. Uh, central banks tend not to buy any silver, so there's a large demand for gold from Russia and China. Russia and Chinese central banks in particular, no particular demand for silver coming from them. Uh, silver also has industrial uses that gold does not have. The funny thing about gold, it's not good for much except money. I think it's the best form of money, but it's not good for much else. Uh, so have it if you want to preserve wealth, have it if you want money, uh, but um, because it doesn't have the industrial applications, it tends not to fluctuate with the business cycle, whereas silver does. So, uh, and the, the old 16 to 1 ratio, that never had any economic basis. That was some uh, silver lobbyists in the, in the United States Congress in around 1900 when they were pushing for a bimetallic standard, and they lobbied for that to create artificial demand for silver. So I don't put much stock in the ratio. Having said that, um, I think both have their place. In particular, everyone should have, a, you know, in the U.S. we have what's called a monster box. Uh, this, this we comes, have them here. But you do. They come, yeah. uh, ours come right from the, uh, from the U.S. Mint. Uh, I'm sure Perth Mint or government mint have the same thing. Uh, has 500 one ounce, uh, in our case, American silver eagles, fine silver, uh, pure silver. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the market prices, they run around $9,000 or so. But people have water and batteries and a flashlight for a crisis. You should have a monster, monster box. box. And if you, can't, <laughs> if you can't afford a monster box, get yourself a stack of 20 silver coins that will run you about $400 or so yeah. with commission. Um, because in a real breakdown, and we've seen real world examples of this. This is not fear mongering. This is not science fiction. Um, you know, Cyprus closed their banks in 2000, uh, 2013. Greece closed their banks in 2015. People in Athens were going to Germany with suitcases, filling them up with euros, flying back so they could have some money to transact it. We've just seen it in the United States with Puerto Rico, which sadly was hit by Hurricane Maria. 80% of the power went out. Well, when the power goes out, no debit cards, no credit cards. Uh, you can't pump gasoline because uh, the gas pumps are electric. And there were even cases of people where the, the, the shelves are kind of stripped, but there were some stores that had water and bread and, and staples and things people needed, but the people actually couldn't pay for it because there was a shortage of money. Uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York chartered planes and flew pallets of $100 bills down to Puerto Rico just to get money in circulation. Wow. So in those situations, if you have a, a high quality um, silver coin, from a reputable mint, a reputable source. You'll be able to go spend it. People will take that uh, in, in extremis. So it's a good form of money. It's a good store of wealth. Uh, I don't put much stock in a particular ratio, but I agree that silver is attractive at these levels, and people should definitely have